Valentov are not really in this game. Sorry. I remember talking to her when I was a She was my one love. My life sucker, you know. They're good ball players. They're showing how capable they are here today. Yeah, Douglas so far here. He has uh, these three points from play. Points from free. He's taking a free here. And we're just, he's just uh, inside the 45 meters line here towards the centre of goal, just slightly to the right. He shapes up to take this from the ground, hits it, didn't get the best connection on it, and it just goes to the left and wide. So he's mixing the good with the bad, but a lot more good than bad. Indeed, yeah. he cut across it again. He's a very unorthodox way of striking the ball. He nearly drives through it like he's going for, like a, like a soccer player, so to speak, take a free kick. Like normally a right footed or a Gaelic footballer would try to curl the ball from right to left. Dougie tries to drive right through the ball, and that time got it horribly wrong. Yeah, it's Wes, Kenny Wes coming out with the ball. Miles just being dispossessed and it's, it's, it's again Casper Mitchell. They just turn over that ball again and it's number five is Ray O'Malley. Ray gives it to Barry Moore. Barry just ships one tackle like that, keeps the ball here. He's just being fouled there. I think he was he was cute enough. He seen the tackle come in, John, and he knew that the, the free was coming if he get going. He didn't need to be very dominant to mention there, just mention there before the lead of took the last three. He, Castle Barry Mitchell's midfield are completely dominant. I think Jason Gibbons the last time, the only time he'd been on the ball there was that last time he went through one. The Castlebar goal, but it's been all all Castlebar around the middle. They've got their matchup spot on. They're, they've been around the block. We can't say it enough. Uh, Patrick Durkin is completely nullifying the threat of Jeremy O'Connor. You have Jeremy McDonough getting stuck into Kenny O'Connor. The rest of the team are feeding off that, but they're playing with such confidence, like uh, they are literally, you know, a team to be reckoned with uh, in, in Mayo and beyond. As Neil Douglas shapes up to take this just outside the 45 metre line, he takes it. It's a better connection this time, but again, it looks like it's just going to the left and wide. So after 29 minutes, we nearly have normal time up here in Elbridge McHale Park. After 29 minutes, it's Castlebar Mitchell's six points, Ballon Tubber one point, one solitary point for the free year you're on from Killian O'Connor. They go short again, Ballon Tubber. In truth, they have no option but to, but to go short. Any time it goes out around the middle, they lose the ball there. So Ballantubber on the attack, Killian O'Connor back at the own halfway line again. That's where he, that's the only way he can get the ball. The ball is, isn't coming up to him here. It's Jason Gibbons. Jason moves the ball onto again. Miles Kelly might see a lot of the ball here. He's not wanting for fight anyways. He's taking the fight to them. The ball is laid over here to Rory O'Connor. Rory plays it into Miles Kelly again. Miles, something could happen here. Miles lays it out to Brian Walsh. Brian, and it's just slowly but no, that wall is there every time, John. They just hit this yellow, yellow wall and they just can't seem to get past it. But just as I speak, here is Jim O'Connor. He breaks through, he breaks through one tackle to the tackle. 
and he's just been pulled to the ground there and it'll be a free in just between the 14 and 21 John. Yeah that's exactly what's needed there, a tremendous break, I mean he came from deep there Jeremy O'Connor that time and Bannon Tucker literally had no other option, um, effective Shane Hopkins the, the sweeper from Casper Mitchell, very effective perfectly timed and is went to come out and, and try to stop any a Bannon Tucker attack but that time on the overlap came Jeremy O'Connor running down the pace and you know when you're at full flight like that Mark the slightest touch will send you over and give a referee, make a referee give a decision in your favour but great one there by Jeremy O'Connor just as I mentioned he wasn't in the game. Yeah Killian O'Connor shapes to take this now just on the 40, 40 yard line to be over the bar and with 30 minutes and 30 seconds gone here in Everest McHale Park. Ballant Tubber registered for the second score. They're behind by four. Caspar Mitchell six points. Ballant Tubber two points. And just one man here who was taking the fight. There's too many bright points here for Ballant Tubber. Uh, Miles Kelly here since we taking the fight to them, John. And just that bit of cut to break the tackle. And any score they've got has come from the likes that have. Absolutely. I mean, Miles Kelly wears his heart in his sleeve. And he's one of those players that's been around the block a couple of county medals in his back pocket. And he's certainly with the fight to, to Castlebar. He won't, uh, he won't shriek any responsibilities, that's for sure. Ball here around the middle here is Jason. Jason Gibbons, Jason Gibbons from Ballant Tubber on the ball and Sam and Miles Kelly again we say he breaks one tackle, he's looking up, he's looking for somebody to give the ball to, takes the soul out of it, out here, out here to number seven and it's Rory O'Connor, Rory, Rory number seven, he lays the ball back a bit, bit lazy there, Jason Gibbons has the ball again but it's slow, it's Garrity, Garrity tries to plough his way through the middle there again but it's just exactly what Castle Barra Mitchell wants, they're being tied up, they're tying up Ballant Tubber out around the middle, out around where there's no danger there, they're slowing the play down, inside there Kelly O'Connor just seems to be going something going on inside, inside there John. There is indeed just the yeah, self and uh, Jeremy McDonough getting to know each other while Kelly was finding it so difficult to get free so I mean he's having to wrestle fellas off the ball but once he got rid of see Jeremy McDonough, McDonough going in rhythm straight with the umpire and he's thinking it was Killian that was having a piece of him first but once Killian broke free from Jeremy McDonough he had another couple of players there, Ray O'Malley I think was there waiting for him so he's going to find it very very difficult but that's what happened to players when you're a special talent especially a week after you hit 4-4 four, four for your club in a quarter final you're going to get special attention and uh, Killian had to work very hard for that free kick much to the annoyance I have to say of Jeremy McDonough Absolutely, just when he should, uh, got, got rid of the shackles of Jeremy McDonough as well as I think it was Owen O'Reilly then they caught him there so there's a resulting free here and it's again it's just inside the 14 just to the left of the post the scoreboard side of, of, the, of the pitch here and it's Kelly shapes up to take this should be over the bar right foot it sweeps it oh and it's just a sign of things here not going right for Valentober and he misses a very very kickable and we have time here at Everest McHale Park 32 minutes gone and it's Castle Bar Mitchell 6 points it's Valentober 2 finished on a very quiet note John because I think everybody expected that to go over the bar I think so there were a lot of people that left for their toilet breaks or coffee breaks expected the score to be 6-3 which would have been kind of an unusual score so to speak such was the dominance of Castle Bar Mitchell if they were hitting them though you know, only three points up at the time, but four points, Kenny missed that free and confidence would be. Like so, from what you know, I know that unbelievable brought back. It may seem like something small, but for me it has been massive. So if this sounds like you, you should get LT from Imagine.ie. That's Imagine.ie. Midwest Radio's text line with Car of Delhi at your local Car of Oil service station, where freshly brewed Tim Hortons teas and coffee add sparkle to your day. Car of Delhi, we're ready to all day. Pharmacy Valentine, building community values through determination, focus, and teamwork for an award winning service. 094 93 64 712 or healthwest.ie. You're welcome back, and now uh, we're ready to go for the second half of that game, uh, the second game in the Senior Football Championship. Uh, not more than six points to two. In injury time, I can tell you with the Mayo Senior Hurling final, and it's Drury 115, Valley Hall is 2 10. Uh, that's the score into injury time. Uh, Mark Lebeau will give you that full time result as soon as it comes through. But let's go back to Elvery's McHale Park. Second half of the game between uh, Notmore and Brafey. Uh, a big part of the game, I should say, between Castlebar Mitchells uh, and Ballant Tucker. My apologies, of course, uh, Brafey uh, losing out in the end to Notmore in that first game. But it's uh, Castlebar Mitchells in control. Six points to two at half time. Let's get the second half with John Casey and first Mark Lebeau. Tommy, you just joined us here just a minute gone here and the score is Casper Mitchell six points.
points, Ballet Tober three points, a free there from Killian O'Connor, so it continues to the ball was in high into Killian O'Connor here as I speak, and it's, it's Casa Barbies just to deal with that expertly out here, out here Shane Hopkins to deal with that back as a sweeper, out to Paddy Durkin, but I think Shane when the ball was gone there, he left his hand in on Killian O'Connor, and Killian's getting a bit rough treatment from his, his county colleague, Barry Moore, being pushed to the ground there, so there's a bit of a bit of a melee here going on, the referee just gets to, to grips with him, but he didn't really miss out to Tommy, we, we had a point from Killian O'Connor, a free there from about 21 yards out, so it continues to be, I suppose, that the Neil Douglas and the Killian O'Connor score, yeah, I show, they've, they've, they've done the bulk of the scores for both sides here, Mitchell says six points, and there's a card being given there, and it's a yellow card to Shane Hopkins, Shane did well to win that breaking ball, laid it off, and just as the ball was laid off, and even, he seemed to, he was a naughty, naughty boy, according to the referee, so there's a hot ball here, and the ball is on the ground, nobody, nobody comes up with the ball, the referee gives it free, and again, they're just not clearing away, they're pushing and shoving, they're on the ground here again, and it's here, it's just at the 21 yard, yard line here, and it's Castle Bar Mitchell that are going to build again, they're on their own 21 yard line, coming up to the 40, 40 yard line, taking a hot solo, it's Danny Newcomb, Danny, Danny plays the ball in there to keep. Key Costo, Key Costo points in the first half. He's down the far side, 45 yard line. He's going to be pushed out over the sideline like that. They had the line man say, yes, he brought the ball out over the sideline there on the far side of the pitch. Finally, start of the second half, or I'd have to say, Michael Cook at that time, uh, given the job of uh, Trank and Key, Key Costo, the two of them are still at over the sideline. Up the other end of the field, Killian O'Connor and Barry Moore, former teammates, having a piece of each other, but certainly has a fiery start to the second half. Absolutely fiery start, and the ball is in again, and it's Owen O'Reilly. Owen O'Reilly comes out with the ball for Castle Bar Mitchell. Coming out through the middle here at the 45 yard line. He's met, he's met, and he meets shoulder. He meets fire with fire there. It was Danny Garrity that met him with a shoulder, and it was Danny that went to the ground. And Owen O'Reilly came out with the ball here. And it's over to Barry. Barry. Barry has the ball in the middle. Barry Moore. And over across, right across to the Donny Newcomb. Donny. Donny lays the ball in. Donny's seen a lot of the ball here. Both quarterbacks from Castle Bar Mitchell's running the ball. And it's Donny going through to the 21 yard line. Donny lays it off to Douglas. Douglas comes out with the ball. A cool head. Just lays the ball out there. Out the ball. The ball goes out to Fergal Turkin. Fergal. Fergal. And the ball is intercepted by Jason Gibbons. And it's out here. Kitty O'Connor. Right down in front of us here. Kitty plays a little dink of a pass in there. And it's gone right into. Uh, it's Alan Plunkett. Alan goes down on the ball. Far side, under the scoreboard here, directly across from here. And then there's Mikhail Park. There's Jason Gibbons on the 45. Far side. Kicks the ball, but it's half blocked down. And it's a sweep with his back. And Shane Hopkins. Shane's seen the ball. He's seen the yellow card as well, too, in the early stages of the second half. But he's doing Trojan work there. And he's bombing up the pitch there. He lays the ball on. And he's looking for the return again. But it's, uh, it's that man, James Durkin. James has the ball like that. It, and Shane Hopkins is still ahead of him. He beats he needs Jeremy, Jeremy O'Connor. Jeremy makes a turn outside. He slows it down. But it's still Castle Bar missions that are on. And it's Donny Newcomb. Donny Newcomb on the ball there. And it's six points here to Castle Bar Mitchell. The balance over three points. And it's Brian Walsh. Brian Walsh right down here in front of us at the 45 yard line. And it's building a balance over. Balance over with the ball here. They need to start this, this half well. And it's the number seven. It's, it's Rory O'Connor. Rory's pulled to the ground there. The lines back comes in to break it up. The management comes in for Ballon Tober just to push the man back. Number 10, it's Fergal Durkin. Fergal is, goes back into in position. The referee wants to have a quick word with him first. He has the book out. And uh, there, isn't, there isn't a minute really here. There's a lot going on here, John. Yeah, yeah certainly the, the they're, making, they're making the officials earn their coast here by what's happening on and off the ball. Fergal Durkin, Durkin that time for a tackle on, on O'Connor receiving a, a yellow card. But yeah, it, it, it's not, it's not uh, very inviting on the ice, so to speak, but it's intriguing to say the least. And you know what? There's only three points. The spike has the bar's dominance. Uh, there's, only, Mark, there's only three points in it. That's it, exactly. It's Brian Walsh. Brian Walsh has the ball down on the 21 yard line, on Castle Bar's 21 yard line. They're forced out to the 45. It's Stephen Broderick. Stephen Broderick came in at half time. He came in for Damien again. Stephen had the ball, but just. just Loses the ball and it's Casper Barmich that come out with the ball again there. But there's Casper Barmich's man is fouled and he's pulled to the ground. And it's, uh, it's, it's that man again, uh, Neil Douglas. Neil who's fouled right down here in front of the cross of the scoreboard. Yeah, and there's players dropping all over the place here. I think uh, Jeremy O'Connor and uh, Declan Corker here, the linesman on this side, is trying to flag the referee's attention as to something that happened. I didn't exactly see it, but all I know is Jeremy O'Connor is in a little bit of trouble on the ground. Yeah, we're down. And you really know we have a stoppage here, and we'll just take this time to, I suppose, say, to say uh, two interested faces here in the crowd here beside us, John. We have Eamon O'Hara, we have Jerry McGowan, uh, the winners of the, the Mayo Championship Meet Tour de Strand in a couple of weeks' time. So it's uh, some interested spectators here beside us. Indeed, yeah, yeah, they have the, 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 
you know, they're able to watch a couple of them. They're going to see three or four games that the Mayo Champions are going to play. And I was just talking to him there at halftime. He's hoping this game finishes in a draw so they can slog at it again in, the, in midweek and then be tired by the time the eventual champions meet Gary or meet uh, Tour de Strand. As the Castle Bar Mitchell's man is down on the ground, you haven't missed Anton here. There's a man down getting attention. He's on the uh, he's on the 45 yard line on his own own goal. Dear dear O'Connor, I think is down. It's, it's just hard to see. There's two or three men around him. The referee is there as well, Liam Devaney. So it's a bit of a stoppage here to get water on. But we've had uh, seven minutes gone or so here in, uh, in Castle Bar, in Elbert McHale Park, and it's six six points. Castle Bar Mitchell's and about October three points. And we're just waiting for the restart here, but. Uh, Kaspar Mitchell, you know, they, they just really, I suppose, John, they just want to make sure that Ballantower don't get any momentum here in the next five minutes. Well, I'm sure their, their, their half-time team talk had to be about uh, the non-concession of a goal, I have to say. Um, you can tell that the way they filtered the numbers back, but the effectiveness of, of their sweeper, Hopkins, I mean, it, it's, it's there for all to see. He's sweeping up lots of ball and very, very effective, as did Rowden for not more in the, in the first game. I mean, it's a superb game by him. Hopkins has the same, has the same job on, but... Uh, mm. Uh, going forward, I mean, Castlebar Mitchell will feel that this game is theirs to lose. If they can keep Ballantubber at bay, keep out the goal chances, they'll certainly create a couple of chances. I mean, so far, I mean, all Ballantubber have to show is three points from freeze, which is, considering what the score was at 6 14 last week, some difference in a week. Yeah, it was it for the opponents, of course. We're just looking down here, thinking the man who be. They could very well do with here today, but he's just walking off the pitch. He's got in to see if Jeremy O'Connor was okay. Jeremy O'Connor still down on the ground. There's three three men attending to him there. And uh, what Ballant Hubber wouldn't give to be able to bring on a fit Alan Dillon at this stage like that. Something like that they need. Really Absolutely. Talk. I mean, you, you can't buy experience like he has, but I mean, I think if Alan was up to, up to it, I think he, he would be a start. And certainly when you're, your team are three points down in during the second half against a team like the current champions like Casper Mitchell, you would spring up. But, yeah, Jeremy O'Connor, which he's up off the ground, but he obviously suffered the blow. I didn't actually see him back in the half, though, but he's obviously worse for work, but I'm glad he's able to continue. Yeah, he's just, just up on his feet, and it's going to be a free here. Barry Bourne free, takes the free in the middle of the park there. There's an into Owen O'Reilly. Owen, out to the far side to Donny, Donny Newcomb. Donny has the ball, puts it inside, but he gives it out to Paddy Durk. Paddy, seen a lot of the ball in this half. He keeps the ball and he's looking for the return again, but it goes into towards the middle there. It's out to Barry. Barry's always there, always there waiting, looking for the ball, looking to give options like that. Barry's in the middle of the pitch. He lays it off there to, to uh, number nine, Niall Nile has to turn right back in their own half back line there again. But, but Castle Barry makes us just keep going. So here we go, and they go down the far side now at this stage. They're at the 45 yard line. They're making the breakthrough. It's O'Boyle. O'Boyle who came on for the black card. He takes it, winds up, takes a shot. Short into the goalie's hands, into Frank Walsh's hands, and it's down right here in the corner at the 21 yard line, right stand side here, and it's Ballant Hubbard that are building again. And it's that man who was down there five minutes, he made the ball in here, and it's Jeremy O'Connor, and it's over the bar. It's Jeremy O'Connor who had the ball, and maybe it was the effects of the knock he had taken there, but he went to play it back to his goalie. It was Neil Douglas who got a foot in, and very, very lucky, John. Oh, like the poacher and sniper, he is Douglas Wynn there. I mean, he undercooked the pass, Jeremy O'Connor undercooked the pass back to. Back to Frank Walsh, you might be right there, Mark, what you said, suffered the effects of the blow he took earlier, but very, very lucky there not to concede the goal, but wasn't done the street, the re poacher, just a toe poke it over Frank Walsh, but over the bar, luckily from a bad power point of view. Yeah, it's full time in the middle, Hurley, uh, by that, the incident draw, Tory, one goal and 15 points, Valley Hall has two goals and 12 points. Meanwhile, back here in the, at the ranch, it's Castle Bar Mitchell, seven points, it's Ballon Tubber, three points. With ten minutes gone here, just click, clocking up to ten minutes gone. Uh, we're looking down here, right in front of us here, it's a free, it's a free. Rio Mali takes the free at the middle of the pitch here, and it's just Castle Bar, it's just this onslaught. They just build again slowly like that, and again, it, Rio Mali ships, it, ships his man, ships a tackle there, and he lays it back to nine line. Nine plays the ball in high, but it's a Ballantubber man who comes out and breaks that ball out, but it's Castle Bar to have it again, and it's nine line. Nine. Nile fails to get the ball to hand there. Jeremy O'Connor there again, and he's actually back up on his feet and he intercepts there, lays it off to Jason Gibbons. Jason in the middle of the pitch, plays it out to the substitute, Stephen Rodder. Stephen there, stick him, plays it inside, but the ball is just made a little bit too oh. far in front there. It's a heavy tackle, it's a heavy collision, and I think nothing dirty there, John. I nothing think it's dirty. Just the last person you want to beat on the head on is Danny Garrity, Mark, I can assure you that. Mother of God, it was an overcooked pass uh, into Garrity, come out, met him full on there take a little bit of recovering from this. It looks like he's damaged his knee there, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah, you 
could see that coming a mile away. It was the ball in there for the substitute. It was Broderick, see Broderick, number 17 on his back. He got the ball out, out, out towards the middle there in, in space. He played the ball, but you could see the minute it left. He had, he had, but he had no, he, he over hit it, but he had acres of space to find Gerrity, I have to say. But I think, I'm not sure, is it Shane Hopkins that... Is it the, is it the, the sweeper, the, the Casper Mitchell sweeper, who's been met full on by full force of Danny Gerrity? It's good to see he's sitting up. I think it actually is, uh, it is Hopkins. It is Hopkins, and he would be a big, a big loss to Casper Mitchell's here because Hopkins has had a huge he impact. He's great in there, I tell you. It's not too many men mark that win with, with, with Danny Gerrity like that and come out the other end, I have to say. He's certainly a big unit, Danny. So we'll have another stoppage time here. Just now to take stock here for a second. There's about nearly 12 minutes, with 12 minutes here. Uh, and it's Casper Mitchell's seven points, Ballon Tubber three points. All Ballon Tubber scores have come from the boot of Kenny O'Connor. All from freeze, I think I do. I do believe, John. So they're offered yeah. very, very little from play at the moment. Very little. I mean, that's something there that has to be worrying. I mean, not, certainly if there is one or two more forwards keeping the umpires busy with their with their white or green flag, you, you can't see Casabar uh, anything but winning this game. But uh, yeah, Ballon Trouble is certainly nice to trade in. That could be dangerous enough decision there. Barry Moore, I think, pulled back by Kenny O'Connor and calling for a card there. Barry claiming it was a Deliberate pulled down to the ground, Killian runs away and gets away with it. Yeah, I think Killian wants to get out there as, uh, as quick as possible. He's cut a frustrated figure, Killian O'Connor here. And just as we say that, there's a substitute here for Castlebar Mitchell's uh, number 18, David Stenson, is on for the number 13, Nile Lyon. So a change there. Uh, as we look down here, right in front of us, just at the 45 yard line and the inside inside the Ballon Tower half and it's a free but it's Neil Douglas he elects to go short he plays it out to the wing there out to uh, Paddy Durkin Paddy lays it off there again lays it off to James Durkin James and they come right back inside here in front of us at the halfway line just inside the halfway line Barry Moore like a quarterback just sitting back in the pocket takes the ball to Key Costello Key he's turned out and then he's lost the ball Key has lost the ball held on to it too much and it's here it's Jason Gibbons right down here in front of us at the sideline and Jason just lays the ball out here there's a great ball out here to Rory O'Connor Rory taking it on there's a man coming in he ships the tackle to his right left he's on the ground there's three Castlebar Mitchell men around him and the referee says it's going to be a free in some good work there by Rory O'Connor there yeah indeed he gave him uh, leave the men he gave him the, uh, gave him the advantage there uh, he got him good by about four or five Casper Mitchell players but he brought it back he initially spotted a foul uh, when Rory O'Connor didn't have to see it myself I have to say so I thought it was a Kind of a soft enough one for for Ballon Tower, but they'll take it and, and give Barry Barry Moore. It was a very good Barry Moore for that one. Moore trying to get in the face of Kenny O'Connor and lose the 20 metres. This would make it an easier free kick uh, for Kenny. Yeah, it's right on the 45 metre line now here, and it was a very difficult kick there. But Barry, I think there's been you know, trying to frustrate Kenny O'Connor. He does look a bit frustrated down there at times, but he's going to take this stand side here, 45 metres in. Excellent angle for a right-footed kicker, and you would expect Kenny. Both is open bar, but we are finding this one just towards the end of the first half that we thought was kickable well. He winds up, he takes the kick, and it goes high, and it's over the bar. And very bad he needs score from Ballon Tubber here. Ballon Tubber, four points. Castle Bar Mitchell, seven points. All four points in the middle of Killian O'Connor, and all, all from Freeze. So we start again here. Rory Byrne, the captain. Rory looking up, looking up. He's looking at his options. He's going to put it out in the middle. And why wouldn't he put it out around the middle when you have Barry, Barry Moore there to him? Or Barry breaks it down here. And it's O'Boyle. O'Boyle has the ball there. Coming out this side. He's looking for options. It's Donny Newcomb. Donny. No. Shane Irwin. Shane Irwin. Shane Irwin has the ball. Lays it off to Paddy Durkin. Paddy. Paddy has the ball. He looks up. There's no pressure being put on Paddy. But he's within his own half there. He's just coming up to the halfway line. Down under the media. Media tower on the far side of the pitch. And it's Barry. The quarterback. Just sitting there in the pocket. He's always there to take the ball. Lays it off to Donny Newcomb. Donny here to the man in front of us. Number 22 is coming in, Anthony O'Boyle. Anthony has the ball. And uh, it is our key, 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 uh, key cost. I've not seen as much of the ball as he did last week, John. No, he's he been well wrapped up by Michael Plunkett. You have to give Plunkett credit for that. Absolutely, here. But it's Caspar Mitchell. So Boyle, Boyle lays the ball in. High ball in there. And he has the ball here. There's going to be a goal chance on here. But no, it's smothered. It's smothered. And the keeper has it. Keeper has it. And it's Frank Walsh. Frank trying to come out with the ball there. Referee says he's been fouled and it's going to be free. But just for a second there, John, yeah. there was a goal on. Half goal chance there, I have to say. I mean, Douglas was the one the ball, but he got it smothered. But it would be not unlike Douglas to get a shot off there, but well covered by the, by the Ballon Tubber defence and saved in the end by Frank Walsh. Ballon Tubber coming out with the ball here on the 45 yard line. It was Brian Walsh. Brian Walsh had the ball and it looked like they had the advantage.
advantage, but he took the ball into the tackle. I think he was looking for the free, but there was no way around Barry Moore. Barry, Barry just stood his ground, and the referee gave a free in. So it's Casper and Mitchell. They go back with the ball, go back to the halfway line, go back to the centre back. Owen O'Reilly, number six on his back there. He's the far side. He lays it off there again. Lays it off here inside, too. And it's Barry Moore again who has the ball. He's seen a lot of ball through his hands at the moment there. He lays it off to Fergal Durkin. Fergal Durkin. Lays the ball in. Oh, there's a foul here. A man coming through, Casper Mitchell. He was body checked. And I think it was one of the, it was a cornerback. Was it Donny? Oh, Michael Plunkett. Michael Plunkett it was. Yeah, Michael Plunkett. Then Fergal Durkin miscontrolled the ball. Took a high solo. And couldn't, Michael Plunkett couldn't help himself but to go for the goes to try and nail him and give a free kick that was interesting to see there. The last free kick had on the 45, Neil Douglas didn't bother coming out taking it, Barry Moore went short. Douglas has obviously decided I'm not going to bother kicking from at them outside 30 metres right now. Neil Douglas with a free just inside the halfway, halfway line, he's been turned over, turned over straight away now. Castlebar Mitchell now is concerned, there's six minutes without a score here. You know, they just feel they, they would have come out here and tried to turn the screw, but they've gone six minutes without a score. It's a ball. Across the pitch here, right across the pitch here to, to Rory O'Connor. Rory has the ball and he's bringing down that goal here, it's just outside the 21. And he passes it off to, to, to Walsh. Walsh takes a shot, but no, it's just to the left and wide. And you just feel John, they need every one of them. That was a able That was a kickable score, but I mean, it was in the air for so long. We all felt, I think, we waited, we waited, Brent, so to speak, to see where it landed over. Just harmlessly went to the left and wide, but you know, it was a good chance. Great break there out of the Ballant Hubbard defence and great ball across and well set up by Rory O'Connor. It's a shame from a Ballant Hubbard point of view that uh, he didn't finish, that Walsh didn't finish. Yeah, just coming up on the 18th minute here and it's Castlebar Mitchell's 7 points, Ballant Hubbard 4 points and it's Castlebar Mitchell's in possession to the far side of the pitch. The ball comes in here to James Durkin. James pushes the man aside as the ball runs out and it runs out over the line. But it was uh, Donny Newcomb, I think, who got a hand to it there. So it's going to be a sideline ball. Far side of the pitch, just inside the halfway line, it's a uh, halfway line uh, favouring. And the ball is kicked over, kicked over here to Keith Costum. Keith Costum, he's smothered, he's smothered up by Jason Gibbons, but illegally so, according to the referee, and Neil Bivani gives a free in to, to Castlebar Mitchell, and there's a bit of mouth in. So I'm not sure if he's going to move the ball in here or something, but there seems to be something going on here. He might be just going over to his linesman to have a word, but I know Jason Gibbons wasn't happy with that decision and did protest his innocence. Not happy at all, but I mean, you're never going to keep every player happy. They've elected to hop the ball as a direct result of uh, some giving out and some back chat. Yeah, so it's Gibbons, Gibbons and Moore, and it's two big men in there. And the ball comes out, and the ball comes out here, and it's a, it's a Casper Mixon's man who has the ball. It's Durkin, Durkin plays the ball in. Long diagonal pass right down in front of us here. But it is a Ballant Tubber man who comes out with the ball there. Coming out with the ball here for Ballant Tubber is the fullback, fullback Brian Murphy. Brian lays the ball right down here in front of us, 45 yards out. It's Dermot O'Connor. Dermot. Is it, here's the ball here to the substitute Broderick. Broderick just delays on the ball a little bit. He gives, it off, gives the ball off to, to uh, Garrity. Garrity is smothered up there. And it's the number 10. It's Fergal Durkin back there sweeping up the ball. Has some guard Mitchell's home. And it's home. And we just seen something there. Yeah, he's waiting there for a touch of the ball on the ground. I'm not so sure. Fergal Durkin had possession of the ball in his hand there, Mark. And when you go to ground and you still hold on to the ball, despite the ball touching the ground, it is not a foul. And I don't know that that would need any it's after giving the foul. There was such a mass of players around them there, it was difficult to see, but it looked like he he, uh, he signaled for an off the ground, which I feel it was a very harsh call against Fergal Durkin. Either way, it's a, it's a foul, and it's about 40 yards out, just towards the middle of the pitch here, a little bit here towards the sand, I suppose, and it's Killian O'Connor, number 14 on his back. He's going to take, he's the man who's keeping them in touch here. Mitchell, seven points. Ballon Tower, four points. He winds up to take this right footed. Good angle for a right footed kicker into the sun. He kicks, he winds up, it looks good, it looks good, and it just creeps over the bar over the match one. So even though we've seen the Castle Bar Mitchells are the dominant team at the moment, John, there's only two points in it. Two points in it, I know. My own club, Charlestown, played in All Ireland semi final against the Nemo Rangers in, in 2001, and Colin Corkery scored all nine points from Freaks to win the Nemo Rangers. I'm just wondering, could the same be for Kenny O'Connor today? Yeah, and they're on the attack here again, it's into, into that man Plunkett, Alan Plunkett, Alan Plunkett hasn't seen much of the ball in between. Turns twice, he takes a shot on, ball away from the keeper, and the keeper, he would sight to fist it out there. We don't know what to talk about, he fists it out here, and it's, it's uh, Ray O'Malley who has the ball, I think they're living a little, little bit dangerously there. Has the bar Mitchell, uh, the, the screw has just been turned slightly and there. And the lead and Hover, you credit to them, they've issued a full court press and they're tacking like demons and giving nothing easy away. And you can see there, Rory Byrne panicked a bit, that would still have been a simple catch for him, but he elected to fist it out, it could have gone anywhere. Yeah, it's Shady Irwin coming out with the ball, the number two, the corner back, he's here at the halfway line. Runner back, he plays a lovely ball in there, that's a great ball in there by Shane Irwin. Plays the ball into Paddy Jerk and Paddy is bearing down the ball here. And the tackle comes in, and illegally so. Uh, I think it is. The 
Larkin it was. What a pass by Irwin into Paddy Durkin. I mean, those three or four players around around uh, Irwin that time to give a great pass. It has to be a black card, I think, for I think it's Declan Larkin, the substitute that has come on for Damien Coleman's black card. And yeah, it's a black card, it is. It is. And it, that was all made by Shane Irwin there. And just he just picked that pass with it. didn't seem to be some time. So the IMC again, yeah, and it was right. I mean, didn't have to break strike Durkin running onto it, and the last thing you want to see is Durkin coming at you at full pace. And I mean, Larkin left with no choice but to, to haul him down. And proper, uh, correct decision. So it's a free, free. A free here for Castle Bar Mitchell's on the 14 yard line. It's Neil Douglas who stands over the ball. Neil got the majority of the scores for Castle Bar Mitchell so far, and he gets this one as well, too. So we have coming to the 22nd minute. It's Castle Bar Mitchell's eight points. It's Ballon Tubber five points. Castle Bar Mitchell's went a long, long time there, John, without a score. And they needed that score because Ballon Tubber were, were turning the screw. They certainly did there. They, I mean, they, they were, their aggressiveness up there up front and their tactic up front was, was a sight to behold, something they didn't do in the first half. But, you know, it's, it's frustrating that time there. But again, the set up for the pass by, by Irwin. I mean, you can't say enough about it to set up uh, to set up Durkin for that throw on a goal. But Castle Bar badly needed that free kick. Just Gibbons was fouled there in the middle of the park, and what he does, he gives the ball, he gives the free out to, to Miles Kelly. Miles, far side of the pitch, he gives it to Dermot O'Connor. Dermot, not suffering the ill effects of that, that knock he took a while ago, he's, he's brought to the ground, he's the far side of the pitch on the 21 yard line, and he's had a tough one. he's very tight over there. And the Castle Bar missions are fighting for their lives here because they know the Ballon Tubber are bringing the fight to them. The ball is played in slight in the middle into Jason Gibbons. Jason lays it out here again to that man Miles Kelly. Miles takes that shot and it's that corner bank shot. So it is. It's high. It's up in the air. And it goes in just, just in around the 14 yard line. But there's a free and it's a free out. And it's Castle Bar Mitchell's. But just for a second, it looked like there was something on. Ball is played out right down here in front of us here. If Sam Siding goes out over the sideline, it would be a Ballon Tubber uh, sideline ball. And it's the man Gary Loftus who has the ball in his hands there. But it just looked like might be something on there for a second, John. Yeah, indeed it was. Kenny O'Connor I mean, left one on one with Jordan McDonough. Kenny used his upper body there. Referee deemed it illegal. I'm not so sure. I thought it was a little bit harmless myself. But a referee uh, signed with Casper Mitchells and elected that Kenny kind of shoved Jordan McDonough before the ball landed in. So 23 minutes gone here in Elbrace McHale Park. And Casper Mitchells eight points. Ballon Tubbard three point or five points. Just one kick of the ball in, I think, here from Ballon. Ballon Tubbard. That's what you'll be saying. Here. And it's Connor Finnerty and now we've seen a bit of the action. Connor who scored two points the last day is on the action. Shot comes in there. Shot comes in there from Jeremy O'Connor and it's to the left and wide. Just, just recapping here, Declan Larkin it was, it was black card and he was replaced by number 26, Connor Finnerty. Connor Sue had a, had a good outing the last day, John, against, against it, this it, is a huge step up. Yeah, a huge step up, very effective so the last day, but uh, you know, just any fan of Tucker uh, forward against the ball, it's a nightmare for them to be honest with you. I mean, they're close by three and four, five tacklers, aggressive tacklers. I mean, guys that are almost as good as, you know, inter-county players, you know, as good as you'll come across. And, very frustrating and difficult for them, but Castlebar Mitchells are, are certainly you know, playing like a team with intent on, on hanging on to their more clear cup. Yeah, you just feel at this stage now that it's uh, the next score or two are vital here. We've got about six minutes left, eight points Castlebar Mitchells, five points Ballon Tubber, and it's Castlebar Mitchells that have the ball in the middle of the park with that man, Barry Moore. Barry, tackled by Killian O'Connor, out around the middle of the pitch, straight down here in front of us at the media tower. He's down under the media tower. He lays the ball out there to, to Keith, Keith Costello. Key there, Jinx on the sideline, he slips his man there, and he's just bearing down on goal, he's 21 yards out, plays a hand pass in there, corner back, it's up there, supporting him, is Donny, Donny Newcomb, plays the ball off with the shot, comes in here, and it's over the bar, it's Donny, Donny Newcomb, number four on his back, the 21 yard line, and he puts it over the bar, but I think it was, it was Keane Costa with a little shimmy out yeah, of the side, Keane Costa said, no, Donny Newcomb, I mean, Donny has been known to attack time and time again, he comes up, he leaves his defensive duties, he gets up there, very composed play by him, but, you know, that score, and I'm just looking at here, Jason Gibbons is off for a blood sub, they've had a, they've had a sub come on for Jason Gibbons, so I mean, that, with, along with the point that, that Tony Newcomb is after scoring, you know, he wonders is there any coming back from this for Ballon Tubber, although Gibbons looks set to return to the floor. Five, five minutes of normal time left here, there's four points in, Casabar Mitchell's nine points, Ballon Tubber five points, and it's Ballon Tubber that are on the attack, the ball has gone right down in here to Alan Plunkett, Alan, number 15 on back, plays it right across the goal, and really, can we see this waste the ball, no, but it's hit, no, it's not, it's just gone out wide, for a second there, I thought it was 
anything can it live. John, it was really wasteful ball, really Wasteful ball, wasteful ball and it looked like it was Keane Costello, believe it or not, that was the last line of defence there for Castlebar Mitchells, and it looked like it looked like he was going to let the ball run out of play like a centre half one in soccer, only for Michael Pluck had snuck in behind him but just failed to keep it in. But living dangerously there, I don't think that, I don't think Rory, Rory Byrne at the Castlebar goal would be thankful for uh, Keane Costello for letting that one go. Ball out around the out long out around the middle and misses Barry and misses Big Barry there around the middle, but it's Castlebar Mitchells that have it here. They have it on the 45 yard line. They're attacking. It's Neil Douglas. Neil Douglas who's had a good outing here so far today. Starting very very well. There's two Ballantyne men around him, and it's the substitute. It's, it's Antonio Boyle that has the ball there, and he plays it out here. Castlebar just recycling the ball. They know that the clock is ticking. There's three minutes, three minutes 52 left in this game, and the ball is played inside there too. There's a chance on here for Ray O'Malley. Ray keeps a cool head, and he pops it out the over the back spot. About 30 metres out, right footed kick, that's over the black spot, and you just feel with about three and a half minutes left that Castlebar Mitchell's John are just doing enough at the moment. And you just wonder there, that last score there by Ray O'Malley, composed, I mean, but loads of space. It looks like Ballant Hubbard are tiring, Mark. They've put a lot of energy into tackling and trying to get themselves free. Double scores here. It's getting O'Connor that is on the attack here. There's a chance here, Alan Plunkett, Alan Plunkett. Castlebar Mitchells 
under, under, under pressure here. But the ball goes out over the sideline, and it's going to be Rory O'Connor. Rory to take the sideline ball. He'll probably put it in around the house here because there's nothing else that can be done. We're into injury time. We're in 30 seconds of injury time, and it's back. Back it's played. Back to Jason Gibbons. Jason, middle of the pitch there. Lays it off again. They're just trying to do something slow here. They're putting the big ball comes in here. In around the house. 21 yard line. It's Brian Walsh. Brian goes up for it. Brian gathers the ball there. He's trying to come through. Three Castle, Castle Bar makes his men. He needs to take this free. It's a free given quickly. Jason, Jason Gibbons here with the ball. He's coming through. Two, three Castle Bar makes it. Needs to get the shot off here. Just like some chance. No. Referee calls it back. Calls it back. About 21 yards out. It's going to be a free. Killian has the ball in his hands. Imagine Kitty, if you look at here, maybe takes something quick. He takes something quick here into, into Plunkett. Michael Plunkett, Michael Plunkett takes the shot, but it's blocked. It's well saved by the keeper, Rory Byrne, and that is probably going to be that, John. There's a free, I think, down here in front of us, Ballon Tubber, but uh, it's all over Bar the Shelf, John. It's all over Bar the Shelf there. I mean, they're trying in vain there, but the strength of numbers there. I mean, Ballon Tubber throwing everybody forward, but there's just a mass of, of yellow jerseys back defending the Castle Bar goal there. Very, very difficult to penetrate that. Corey O'Connor with number three on his, on his back there is going to take this free right down in front of us about 40, 40 metres out. Takes it, he's going to drop it in. It's shorter than he thought it would. The referee's going to make him take it again because he's going to make him take it again after the way he kicked it. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's Keith Costo who had a, a great game and a hand of two or three fighting scores there in the second half. Keith Costo's gone off and it's Danny Kirby who's going to see some time here. Not, not much time left here. Uh, another minute possibly. But again, we have... Uh, Ballon Tubber with the free down here, just uh, outside the 21 yard line, the Casper 21 yard line. Ball is kicked in this time, it goes in around the house. Nearly every player is back in there around the house, and it's gone out, and it's gone out for why? Why ball? So we're two minutes into injury time here. Uh, Casper Mitchell's one goal, 10 points. Ballon Tubber, five points shot. Uh, I think the referee's got in yeah, there. Yeah, 45 he's there, yeah. He's he's like the, the, yeah. It was actually uh, Callum King and Kind, the, the substitute for Casper Mitchell, they're elected to fly the ball. What are, the ball wide, Killian dropped it into the square. Drops it in, and a fist came in there. And this time it definitely is wide. The last occasion, I think the umpire did signal wide, but the referee went into it. Overruled him, yeah. overruled him. Um, consultant 45 was taken, floated in, and fisted out and to the wide. The crowd are starting to leave here, Everett's McHale Park. We have nearly three minutes, we're nearly taking into three minutes of injury time here. Rory Byrne, the captain, will be a happy man. He'll kick this ball out here. Castlebar Mitchell's one goal and ten points. Ballon Tubber, five points. And those five points, I think, all came from the boot of Killian O'Connor and all, all from free. So that kind of tells its own tale here today. Out around the middle there, it's Dan O'Boyle. The man who came on for the black card. He, he lays the ball in. It's Castlebar Mitchell's again. 21 yards out. They have a chance here. There's a man coming through. It's, it's Neil, Neil, Neil Douglas. Neil Douglas caught around the head and it's a free in it. And this would surely be probably the last score of the game, John. But Neil Douglas, in all fairness, something that has been timed. He started the game very well, well, went out of it, but came back into it again when Castlebar Mitchell needed him. He did. He's one of them go to players at club level. Um, very, very good player. I mean, some of the scores he's got for Castlebar Mitchell down the years have, have been something to behold. He got an unbelievable goal against Currafin in the Connacht Club final in June. Um, just a go to man, really, up front for them. And he plays with such confidence. I mean, he's a. He's, he's well capable, he's a confident player and you can tell by that, you can tell by the way he walks around the place that he's, he knows where he's at, but there, you see all his wily experience there to get his body in the way, get the foul over and as a result get himself a simple tap over free for I think it's point number eight for him. Point number eight there is right for Neil Douglas and uh, Neil has, has absolutely been on fire uh, today, so he has one of the big reasons as Casper Mitchell's one goal and 11 points, I think they make it over there on the scoreboard to five points. Ballon Tubber on the attack here. Ballon Tubber right down in front of us here, just up, coming up to the 21-yard line, and they recycle the ball out. It's Jeremy O'Connor. Jeremy is not going to, he's not going to give up the fight. He's going to keep fighting, and there's a free here, 21 yards out. Jeremy takes oh, a shot. Oh, the back of the net, the back of the net. It doesn't make much difference, but it's led by Jeremy O'Connor. It's been given, I think, is it? It is. I think it has. I think, I think it, it has. Danny Gersey that ended up getting it all right. Yeah. I think it was after a blistering shot by, by Jeremy O'Connor there, superb save by Rory Byrne, but how Danny Gurley seemed to be standing in the in the six yard box, but yeah, they've given the score all right, but what a shot and save by Jeremy O'Connor and Rory Byrne respectively, but Danny O'Connor, Danny Gurley there waiting for the scrap there to rifle it to the net, just a little bit too little too late. Yeah, just to, to put a bit of respectability on the scoreline, unfortunately, so it's Castlebar Mitchell's one goal and 11 points. Ballon Tubber, one goal and five, and it's out around the middle. Killian O'Connor wins the ball out around the middle from the resulting free from the, the, the kick out. And it goes floating right in again. Killian 
Paul Ryan. And it's been a feat to play Kelly. It's been out around the middle, John, when you want him in there on, the, on, the, on that ball. Yeah, indeed. It's a classic case of Robert Peter to play Paul. I mean, he's the type of guy that wants to be stuck in and involved and everything. But I suppose he is more beneficial in front of the goal. But then if the ball isn't going in, Mark, what do you do with it? He likes to be out and stuck in it. But, you know, it was a... Final, final whistle goes here. Elbridge McGill Park. And it'll be Castleberry.